You're listening to DraftKings Network. Hold on to your kilts. Peacock Original, The Traders, is back with a new season of strategy, betrayal, and sabotage. This time, an all-celebrity cast that Vulture has hailed as reality royalty returned to a Scottish castle for the ultimate murder mystery competition. With a big cash prize on the line, there's no telling how cutthroat these missions will get or what host Alan Cumming will pull out of his brilliantly eccentric wardrobe. The Traders is streaming now with new episodes Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on Peacock. Welcome to the Big Sui, presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Lebitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. That hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. I am going to apologize about 30 minutes too late to the audio only audience for that 30 seconds of Jalen Brown, Duncan Robinson trash talk that didn't sound like anything. (laughs) Because there was no sound. Because it was mostly subtitles. uh, And in so doing, I may lose a portion of the audio audience again here as I show again for the second day one of my favorite videos, Pedro Martinez fighting with Don Zimmer. And Don Zimmer rolls out forehead first uh, to uh, fight with Pedro. Pedro got into a lot of controversy where Mike says that race is involved because uh, that Dominican young man threw him down to the floor by his ears. The lovable, bald Don Zimmer. And now Stugatz has Jack McKeon in a fight because (laughs) David Sampson, I I want to address this very quickly with you, David. Uh, You are saying flatly, you're not saying you would, but you're saying some sort of discipline to show who's in charge, but not enough discipline to actually cost myself the game. That's the tightrope that I'm willing to walk. Hmm. Okay, but you walked your position back some because benching him for the game would be even more badass and show show who's in charge all the more, but would be even dumber than having a coach not know the rules in a Super Bowl. You said it during a Super Bowl or a World Series game. For a regular season game, it's not even a question. If Kelsey does that, and I don't mean throwing of the helmet. I'm talking about physically touching the coach. He's gone for the game at least. But, David, going back to your 03 team that won the World Series, if Beckett, during the World Series, touches Jack McKeon, he's not coming out. You're not taking him out. Jack's not taking him out. Brad Penny, different story. You would skip a start for Penny with a smile on your face. Wait, okay? whoa, Penny was good in 03. Well, Bo, Penny was good. He was really good, for those of you who may not remember. So the answer is you have to. We had conversations like this because we had to have it about Hanley Ramirez, who was really a problem for us in the clubhouse, and we had to figure out what to do with him. And one of the things we did was, was bench him. And one of the things we did with Pudge when he disappeared during 03 and then he reappeared, Jack said to us and we agreed, I'm not playing him. And Jeffrey said, you've got to play him. We want to win these games. And Jack said, if you really want to win as a team, you've got to show the rest of the team that you're not going to let the superstar dictate the terms. Travis Kelsey, is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? Maybe, yes. but he yes. is way more... If you don't think that he's don't, more don't, in the news. Don't diminish, don't diminish Kelsey's credentials. First here. ballot Hall of Famer. So first ballot Hall of Famer. Do you agree that he is more in the spotlight because of his relationship right now? Yeah. Yeah, naturally. Yes. Okay. Therefore, there is a different standard you're putting on what happened during that Super Bowl because it was the Super Bowl and because it was Travis Kelsey. And Mike's not wrong. If that had been a different player, if that had been a black player who had done that and, the, and there had been some sort of ramification for that, we're having a totally different discussion. And I would like to have the discussion based on how you don't lose your clubhouse. And again, CBS didn't show us. Do we know for sure that Travis Kelsey didn't sit for a series? I don't know the answer to that. I feel like it would have been pointed out, but... Um... Either way. Nothing was pointed out. It was left. It was left. Nothing was said. Yeah. That's a that's a kind of capital that uh, Travis Kelsey has bought with people because of his career. I want to switch gears uh, quickly because I, I want to get your opinion on whether or not Nike's going to have to do a uniform recall because players are really upset that the customizable options on pants are gone and uh, consumers, the people that love to buy MLB merchandise, if you've seen the new uniforms, and we'll throw some. Uh, some comparisons between last year's on the left and this year's on the right these new 
MLB uniforms look really cheap, really cheap. And I think the, the reaction to this has been so toxic that we might actually see uniforms being pulled this year. David, what is your take on uh, the, the new uniform controversy? So you're catching me a little bit and we're live. So I think I'm right. But someone can do a fact check with the 40 people working there. Fanatics does the uniforms. Fanatics and they says licensed I, uh, the Nike swoosh to put on them. Correct. And uh, so every, I don't look, believe look, they're look. manufactured by they, Nike. They, so everybody wanted to take the opportunity to jump down Fanatics' throat because Fanatics is a very polarizing entity. But the specs were provided by Nike. Darren Ravel has done reporting on this. Even a, a, a Twitter account by the name of Fanatics Suck, which exists. Because they want to slam dunk every day uh, of making fun of fanatics. They put the blame over on Nike because Nike provides these specs. And it doesn't matter who manufactures it. They're just following the lead from Nike. Yes, they are licensing the swoosh. But the design, everything was provided by Nike. So this is all done over a year in advance. It all gets approved. It all gets manufactured. And the specs get given to the licensees who then make the uniforms. There is zero chance that all the uniforms will be pulled and new uniforms will be made and then sent to all the teams prior to the regular season. These will be the uniforms. I draw your attention to when the Marlins switch uniforms, everyone complains. When every team switches uniforms, the majority of people are negative and you just get through it. So I don't think there will be any change because what do you do with all these uniforms? The MLB is not going to eat it. Fanatics is not going to eat it. Yeah. And so you're left with this inventory and they're not going to write it off. I hear you, although I feel pretty strongly now that I should put some action on these uniforms being recalled because of uh, your passion here. But the players are coming out and saying these are bad. It's one thing if no one if, cares. If something it doesn't carry any additional weight if the players are complaining about it? No. Would you agree Zero. that it looks terrible? <laughs> I would agree that I couldn't read the names on the back of the Marlins uniforms, but those got approved by everybody. And now they're changed, I understand, from your first segment. I hadn't seen them, but that's outstanding that they're now changed. Do I think that they look worse this year? I personally do. But a big part of the uniforms, I haven't felt them yet. And the players are very concerned about how they feel, what sort of the wicking is, and then sizing. Because some players, when we go through sizing with new players, this is a funny little story if you have a minute. We spend time with players who we acquire figuring out what size they like. Do they like their pants to be tight? Like Stanton always would have special issued undershirts right. that he would do his interviews in that were so tight that he that he would wear my size. Right, but one of the chief complaints here, do? David, I mean, one of the chief complaints here is that those customizable options aren't afforded to players now. So we, you, you, they are because what you do is we have seam seamsters, seam strut, seams. Um, Whoa, the people who that was a glitch. That's a, that's a, that's a, you want to say seamstress and just make it. You got it. Yeah, it's a easy real to glitch in yeah. the system there. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> seamstresses? Yes, there I got you go. It. We have to play that back. <laughs> are seamstresses <laughs> only women? Because ours are men. So I didn't know whether it was a seamster. Uh, uh, anyway. Is it a tailor? Yeah. You can say kit man. <laughs> it is a kit man. We have a bunch of people in the clubhouse who are altering uniforms all the time. So I'm not worried about players not having the size they want. You don't care at all what the players think about anything in this scenario. Like the players about uniforms? No. The players uniform. Well, but I mean, this is deeply personal though, David. They're they're playing for eight hours a day. They're in clothing. They'd like it to be something. They they collectively bargain everything with you. It needs to look decent. It can't look cheap. Like if if major if the players union wants something like this to look better, if the complaints are loud enough, you don't get to just be right on this. They'll wear what we tell them to wear. They will, but what a dream. If there's a negotiation where the players want to collectively bargain that they've got a say over the uniforms and they're willing to give up something financial for that, then I guarantee you players will have a say over what uniforms look it's like. It's not without but precedent. Not it's not without happen. precedent in other sports with the unions not strong enough. Remember, they changed basketballs, and you might want to say, okay, well, that's what they play the sport with, so you can understand that. But remember, players rebelled against the sleeves that Adidas – uh, wa was creating for basketball. LeBron went as far as to tear sleeves off of his uniform, and they stopped manufacturing those. It did take some time. What are you shaking your head about, Samson? 
I'm laughing because, yes, there are moments that players like to take stands on certain things. We've had players take stands on what they wear under the uniform because that is also a rule. We tell the players what they can wear underneath and what can be shown. And now there's going to be rules, I'm sure, about having batting gloves hanging out of your back pocket because, God forbid, that ever gets tagged. But I don't have never seen a baseball player take a stand like a LeBron James. I, I don't even know who, which baseball player would have that type of ability. It's not Judge. It's not Trout. It's not anybody who would have that level of power. It's not Max Scherzer. I can't think of anybody. Bryce Harper? Would, no, no, absolutely not. Hmm. No client so of Scott Boris would get anything done with Major League Baseball. <laughs> All right. Uh, again with Scott Boris, I, I think, here are your options because we've only got three minutes left, and I know I could get you going on Boris. He's got a bunch of clients who are still available as spring training begins. You love to hate on Boris. Is there anyone you hate more, and is it because he's better at business than you are? No, it's because he screwed Jose Fernandez's family. I respected him when I negotiated against him because he got, he got an owner to always give in. And he generally always got his players what they wanted. But when he crocodile teared at Jose's funeral, that was it. I would never, there is no coming back from that. There's no coming back from not properly being in touch or taking care of the family ever since and just walking away from them. There's no coming back. And I don't, I'm not a grudge holder. I don't have this level of visceral anger toward anyone else in my life as I do for him because I know him well enough and I know what he did and I know exactly what is happening in the world of Jose's family and I can't forgive it. I just won't. What if he were to say to you, hey, David, it's nothing personal? I'd say thanks for watching the show, which I know he has his people watch and listen to every show and that makes me smile. Uh, let's play the clip for David here on him trying to figure out <laughs> whether he should say seamstress or something else. Is we have seam seamsters seam strut seams um whoa <laughs> it's so great I finally it wasn't me <laughs> that's the world we live in where i need to be worried about not upsetting anyone with the word seamstress uh you didn't need to worry about that but you did play it again in his face you didn't need to have seam seamsters seam strut seams um whoa why don't you stop complaining about the world you live in and just say it right? Because did you know that there's no male version of Seamstress? Well, I didn't know the rules of overtime either, but it didn't make me stop criticizing Kyle Shanahan. Not at the Shanahan. <laughs> oh, he knew the rules. He did not. 30 seconds or less, what are you reviewing? Oh, 30 seconds for Society of the <laughs> That's Snow. Tough, and whether or not you All right, no. You're right, halfway David, done with it, Dave. Right, it's really it, good. Hold David. on. Yeah, hold on. Just stop right there. Do your review, and Juju will put it out on social by itself because you don't want to be limited <laughs> limited to 30 seconds. Uh, nothing personal is the podcast. If you want 50 daily minutes, uh, they are rocket fueled with David Sampson every, uh, every morning. Thank you, David. Take care. It's forty five. We have seam seamsters. Seam <laughs> stra seams um Whoa. Hold on to your kilts. Peacock Original, The Traders, is back with a new season of strategy, betrayal, and sabotage. This time, an all-celebrity cast that Vulture has hailed as reality royalty returned to a Scottish castle for the ultimate murder mystery competition. With a big cash prize on the line, there's no telling how cutthroat these missions will get or what host Alan Cumming will pull out of his brilliantly eccentric wardrobe. The Traders is streaming now with new episodes Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on Peacock. Don Lebertard. If all the rain drops were lemon drops and gun drops, oh, what a rain that would be. Stugats. Standing outside with my mouth open wide. Ah, ah, ah. If all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh, what a rain that would be. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. Billy broke my heart a little bit this morning when he came in and felt like love was a little broken for him because he asked the group with a sly smile on his face. It's a private conversation. <laughs> when do you stop caring about Valentine's Day? Oh, boy. <laughs> it's a private conversation right. amongst, you know, 
colleagues. Well, now we're here because it broke yeah. my heart. Yeah. Not friends. There friends. are no private conversations around Dan Lebetard. Really. There are not. You know no. this. Have you, you should stopped, know better. Have you stopped caring? Or? No, I'm just curious <laughs> if everyone else had stopped caring. I saw I saw Dan, if we're just airing things out. I saw Dan yesterday when I was walking to the elevator, walking in this direction with a giant wrapped thing in hearts. That I, I didn't know. Did you wrap that yourself? Uh, no, Elise. Oh. Uh, Elise wrapped it. But I trick I trick my wife every uh, every gift giving time into thinking that I have wrapped them. But I of course I have not wrapped them. I don't wrap well. It's a heady play. Uh, but have you delivered the gifts already? Like, how do you do Valentine's Day? Do you wake up your wife and then you have like all of the gifts there? Or what's I, the play? I have I have learned. I, I will tell you this. I did not know the importance of these things. Uh, I did not have any access to sort of the idea of treating something as silly as a contrived commercial holiday into a reminder uh, that I love her. But hmm. why would I not remind her as often as I can? I'm very happy with her. And so I have learned, yes, before I left the house today, I left an assortment of things out that if she had woken up earlier, she would have gotten to, but I had to leave before she could open them. You're still new to the game. You are. Uh, that will stop. It will stop in a few years. And how about you tell her you love her on Thursday? Yeah, that's, I do. that's I do. You yes, know? I do. But I tell her more on uh, the appointed days. Huh. Look, man, it's been a rough go for her for the last two years. And I could not be more appreciative in all the ways of the way that she loves me. And so if I can show her in some small way on a day that's commercially meant for it, I'll do it. How small? No, I wasn't small. No, I'm a good gift giver. My, my heart was broken yesterday because I, I like to get my wife Valentine's Day gifts uh, they're not the traditional teddy bears and roses. I think we've kind of uh, outgrown that. Uh, I like to give my wife things like shoes and, and University of Miami stuff that I know that she appreciates. So I got her these shoes that she said she really liked. And I went to go put them in her closet. We have separate closets. And I put it in the closet. And I was reminded of a pair that I bought her two years ago that I totally forgot about. And I put these shoes next to that, and the laces still hadn't been done on the shoes that I bought her two years ago for Valentine's Day. That was a bit crushing. Huh. It seemed that she doesn't like the University of Miami apparel. Well, these were the shoes. these were like Golden State Warrior uh, Jordan ones, the, the the royal blue and gold. So really excited, like I got them. Screen cap type of thing right there's a big nike drop two years ago and i was really excited to give it to her i'd totally forgotten that the pair existed because she hadn't been wearing them and she's gone so far as to care so little that she hasn't even laced them up i bought this pair two years ago but you're a you're a huge romantic are you not doesn't like, sound like this is a bad example of um gear I mean. uh, well you may you should buy them in your size just in case she chooses not to wear them then you can that'd use be, them that'd be odd yeah i don't think she can fit in uh, 12s but yeah, no, I'm I'm hugely romantic, but I, you know this is our twentieth, twenty plus Valentine's Day together. I, I'm tr I'm struggling to to find something that captures the es essence of romance here. I save that for every day, you know. I, I just love her every day, mm -hmm. but this is one of those days in the calendar that you're supposed to give gifts. Um, I don't receive gifts on Valentine's Day. I don't. I don't ask for one. I, I don't expect them. It's her day. The greatest gift that I give my wife every single year is the gift of no sex. It's, I mean, never seen her happier. Why did you roll your eyes at that, Jessica? Every year the same joke. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I haven't even I'm worked I'm never going to stop. It was yeah. a call and repeat. We said it well, here before he well, even here, said it. Yeah. And so I, I would like. It's a great a, gift. I, try I, it out. I would like as, it a, as a gift, as uh, an appropriate gift. I'm not going to try it. Try it out. <laughs> I'm, I, on behalf of our show, I'm about to give Jessica a Valentine's Day gift. She bakes around here. She makes some delicious things for us. And uh, the gift I'm going to give her, and I'm promising her this every year for the rest of of time is a sound on the show that she has never heard before that we are going to introduce her to that is in the news. A terrible gift. I That's worse than Mike's you, you, I'm going to give her the I gift. I gave just a jersey the gear. I, I'm I mean. going to give her the gift of laughter right here. <laughs> you guys don't know us. The Knicks. The Knicks. How about uh, you stop talking about my relationship? The so when does love die? Did we get an answer officially on like this? Somewhere ago. between my relationship and your relationship. At the gift of no sex. We're doing Valentine's Day. What are you guys right? doing? Well, Lehman said he was going to surprise me, but then he told That's... me right before he dropped me off what we were going to do. Oh. What is it? What is it? Can you yeah, tell what you taking me out to lunch after the show with uh, the doggies. Oh, nice. Do you like surprises? Would so you have nice. preferred it I as like a surprise? I like when it, there's a surprise, but I find out what the surprise is beforehand. When did he say it was a surprise? <laughs> Last night? When I asked him when he dropped me off, I said, what are we doing for Valentine's Day? And he said, it's a surprise, Classic. but I'll tell you. 
you. Classic line. So he gave you, you the perfect gift. Plans. This yeah. is what you want to be doing. He told yes. you you have enough control of the situation that you, you're getting it on your terms. Exactly. And it's sort of a surprise. But it's his idea. But right? it was a surprise. But it wasn't a surprise. Did you guys see the episode of Curb this week where they, it I was did. Susie's birthday where this is like, the I'm wondering gifts. yeah, if Lehman did this situation where, you know, he's like, it's a surprise. And then you're like, well, what's the surprise? And then he says what the surprise is. And then he tries to gauge whether this is good enough a good of a enough surprise su- for you. It's a great then he strategy. Has, he has by all Larry. day long while you're at work to figure out what else do I need to get for Jess. <laughs> Last year he got me this Guy Fieri Valentine's Day shirt, which oh. was also a surprise. Uh. And now I'm wearing it this year. You guys think it's a shitty gift from me to her, but you don't even know what the sound is because I'm going to give her the gift of laughter. The Knicks are going to win this protest, and there's going to be extra game played because there's going. it's not going to be one of these two-minute reports. They're going to win a protest because uh, the call guy – I know Billy doesn't agree we'll with see. this, but Ed Malloy was in the middle of this, and I just asked Jessica, have you ever heard our Ed Malloy sound? And her response was no. So here is the end of a Timberwolves wow. game, and it's what we know as a show of Ed Malloy. Malloy. Down by two, 198, inbound to Love on the left side with one dribble, goes up for the shot, it's blocked by Marion, the ball comes into the arms of Dalibert, the horn sounds and the ball game is over. The Timberwolves are screaming for a foul, there was none called. Rubio off to Love, oh that's a foul! That is unbelievable. The referees are booed as they go off the floor. Brutal! David Guthrie is right there. He didn't have the guts to call it. Also, go oh, Ed Malloy! <laughs> what a gift. <laughs> this stands the test of time. It really yeah. does. Better than lunch with your boyfriend? I'm, I'm more excited for lunch, to be honest. And the Guy Fieri t-shirt. I can't believe it. <laughs> Sorry. And the thing Mike gave me. What? A jer- he gave, yeah, us gave all everybody jersey. a Valentine's Day present. Yeah, uh, Mike, okay. Mike you're, you were trying to be thoughtful, <laughs> and everyone then sat on their shirts. Tell the people what you tried to give everybody here. It was a very thoughtful gift. Yeah. I had a friend that works for uh, AFC Bournemouth, and he, he gifted everybody on the show customized jerseys. No matter your team, we still root for Jim Fravola. hopefully future AD at the University of Miami. We all root for Jim Fravola <laughs> and the Fighting Super Cherries. Uh. Can you guys tell me whether anybody other than the Chiefs and the Kelseys? Look at this pathetic pile of jerseys that has just been. <laughs> well, those are the people that aren't here to claim their jerseys. That's what's still bad. Yeah. Called the guys. Super That's Cherries. That's mean. Someone fold those at least. <laughs> It's a lovely gift. Those are lovely jerseys. People would like to have those jerseys. We've got just a big pile of them in the other room with our names on them. (laughs) Apparently no one wants them. The ultimate gift will be when you try to squeeze into an umbro. Oh. I wanted to ask the group whether anyone other than Mahomes and the Chiefs and the Kelseys won the Super Bowl weekend business more than Dunkin' Donuts. More than more than Dunkin' Donuts giving you a commercial that spans generations, that grabs some nostalgia, that is funny, and then they release gear that sells out, and then they release the four-minute commercial that has J-Lo and Matt Damon in it. And I, I'm genuinely curious because there were a lot of people making a lot of money on Sunday. Did Dunkin' Donuts win the entire advertising spe- spectacle, or did someone else win it? I knew about Dunkin' Donuts beforehand. Yeah. I didn't know about Temu, and I didn't know about uh, CeraVe. I knew that uh, there was a lotion, but I thought I that love the Cera- CeraVe. I now I, I I spotted it in the the supermarket the other day. I'm like, oh, that's Michael Sarah's cream. I'd that's also a say good point, Mike. they lost because they've been just Dunkin' for like five years already, that and we're still just calling them Dunkin' Donuts. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they changed their name. I yep. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah American runs wow. on Dunkin'. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they dropped the donuts. Mm-hmm. So they didn't win the weekend. Somebody else won the weekend. I thought everyone loved that commercial. Everyone thought- did, and the the tracksuits uh, sold out. Um, but uh, I mean, we all they they had brand recognition. I, I I was introduced to several brands in the Super Bowl. So isn't that the point of spending that much money? So I think that they won, and then 
people were like, I want these track suits. And then Darren Ravel tweeted out that he had one yesterday. And then everyone was looking up the exchange policy yeah, on the track suits. It's just kind of like a weird, loss, yeah. Yeah, it's a weird yeah. like win. And it's so great. And you sell this stuff. And it's like, oh. All right, Juju, put it respectfully. on the, put it on the poll. Yeah, respectfully. Respectfully. Uh -huh. it, uh, Juju, put it on the poll. Respectfully, is Darren Ravel a boner killer? I would say de-influencer, <laughs> but you can go with that, too. Hell yeah. Did anyone... That looks good on him, I'm not going to lie. But I wouldn't wear it now. <laughs> oh, Joe, really? Oh. Well, it was a bucket of death punishment for us. Like, yesterday, we planned that out, but... Well, now it's an actual punishment. That's no one the, wants to yeah, wear Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It, that's how quickly something goes from popular to unpopular? Ravel. As yeah. soon as Ravel wears it? <laughs> really? So if he could get it before you, you no longer want it? <laughs> That's wrong. That's wrong. Look at you. Look, the cool kids back there. Uh, I I thought it like was- someone a mentioning your grandma mid-stroke. Unless you're trying to hold it down. What? What? <laughs> what? Valentine's Day, ladies and gentlemen. What do you want me to do? Oh. Oh. Yeah. No, I've been there. I've been there. You want to impress, and then can you keep those thoughts to yourself? No, See, you got Dan writing things down now. No, man. You, you've been there. Big day. You want to no, impress? No, I haven't. Next thing you know, you're in a nine-inning baseball game. Do we need to do breathing exercises again? I mean, yes. Can we? Can someone lead us in breathing exercises? Because you've never been there you. having sex and Mentioning? then try to go through all the killer bees of the Astros. <laughs> Derek Bill. You're just trying to put on a show over here. They will. People forget about Bell. <laughs> they do. He's the, forgotten, he's the forgotten bee. <laughs> I'm stunned that that was moving so fast for Stugatz that he didn't even notice Tony's. I thought about Derek Bell, and then I came quicker. He didn't even notice Tony's unless you're trying to keep it down. <laughs> yes. It's an unstoppable force sometimes, oh, come Dan. On, especially man. on that Macca. Come on. TurboTax experts make all your moves count, filing with 100% accuracy and getting your max refund guaranteed. So whether you worked a side hustle to afford season tickets to your favorite sports team or move states and adopted a new team, switch to TurboTax and make your moves count. See guaranteed details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Don Lebertard. If I'm at the house with them and they're all rooting, I could just wow. be like, yeah, rah, rah, rah. Go Yankees. Stugats. Do you know how unsettling it would be if I attended a live sporting event and someone behind me was just going, Rah, rah! <laughs> rah, <laughs> Browns! Rah, Heath! Yeah. <laughs> rah, rah, rah! This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. Three days after the Super Bowl, Mike Ryan tossed the Molotov cocktail of race into the proceedings, wondering whether or not Travis Kelsey, if he had been black and bumped Andy Reid, whether the reaction would have been different the way that A.J. Brown was suggesting. And of course it would be. It's just funny that what we're presently in the middle of, because it has been sanctified by Taylor Swift. She is the halo over this, like Tebow was the halo over the Gators huddle that concealed a murderer. The idea that a rage-fueled tight end would trample his coach and that his drunken brother was shirtless everywhere all over Las Vegas. <laughs> if that family was overrunning football and the pop star and weren't what that family is, it would be received far differently. The whole, the whole experience, Jason Kelsey dominated the Super Bowl. People wanted to see that dad bod careening from holding kids to, to galloping in his pajamas through the airport on the way back to, you know, wherever it is that he's coming from because he just did seven days of God knows what. <laughs> drinking nonstop, partying with his brother, drinking liberally from fame chastising his brother for not inventing the fade and having that be a New York Times article as Black History Month starts because everyone's new to the Kelsey party. But can when does drunken, drunken brother ever get to be a part of the grift? Drunken brother on the side, loved by everybody. Maybe more uh, popular. Politics. Yeah. Billy Carter and Jimmy Carter is the only place. I remember <laughs> that being a blight on Jimmy Carter's. I remember that being RFK. a... RFK. Like Kennedy's, w. yeah, W. Like it's 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 a it's a political mainstay, really. Yeah. She's super American. 
Everyone loves Jason Kelsey. Maybe we got it going on, Hunter adjacent. Jason Kelsey is lovable, is he not? Yes. Yeah, yeah. super lovable. Relatable, oh. yes. What happened, Billy? Uh, it's too much already. What? I just, it's too much. What do you mean? You guys aren't tired of him. I mean. Yeah, he's stealing his brother's shine. Nah. Yeah, he is. Wow. He's grifting off Taylor Sharing. Swift here. Sharing How? He's, he's in the background of all these videos oh. just being drunk. He's yeah, not. he's in the background he with a wrestling mask background. on. Yeah, <laughs> he He's someone that just wants to be a, Look a at supporting this role. Taylor and Travis are in the background, and then the camera pans to the foreground, and guess who's there in a Rey Mysterio mask next to Someone that doesn't want to be <laughs> seen. <Hell> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, really Look at him. He just wants to fade player. into the background. Front yeah. and center. Exactly yeah. right. He's just there to support Travis. You guys are Travis. jealous. You've never had this good of a time in your life. That's true. And and you nor never will I will. ever. No, I will not. It seems like Jason, Kelsey, and Travis are enjoying the holy hell out of life. I'm curious whether now the relationship gets real for Taylor and Jason as they have to spend time around each other. <laughs> well, Taylor and Travis. Yeah, Travis. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, unless you, you know something we don't. Unless she's spending too much time around Jason, which also might be a wake-up call. Yeah. Yep. Why is it that older brother Jason is giving off so much dad compared to Travis? How is it that he seems so much old? Is it it's just the, the hairy gut? No, it's, it's, not the yeah. it's not just the gut. It's the hairy gut. Yeah. Yeah. That The fact yeah. that the gut is hairy. Well, the fact that he's a dad, too. Yes. Dads are always hairy. I don't know why. It's true. <laughs> I always think of dads and I think of hairy. I don't know. Guys, mm -hmm. you guys know that we're still not right from Vegas. All of us are still broken. Uh, I'm not sure how sober Jessica still is. Vegas with kids? Are you out of your mind? Vegas the way Jason Kelsey just did it? Even with all the help in the world, my God, that man must be tired right now. You know how when you're in Vegas, they pump like the oxygen through the casinos and stuff to keep you awake and you kind of start... Is that what it was? You guys didn't know that? No. Is that like an old wives' tale? What is that? No, 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 that's no, true. No, they do that. Okay. There's no right. clocks and they yeah. pump in oxygen. Yeah, like I. For the I've, people not using cocaine. No windows. Yeah. They don't give you windows so you can't see outside. Exactly. And you just kind of feel like you're in this weird kind of fog, this weird haze. I still feel that way. And at this point, I'm wondering if I'm just getting sick. Yeah. Mm. I don't feel right. All of us are coughing. Again, the flights back, red eyes from Vegas are the worst. Beans as an appetizer. I don't know why they would do that. I don't, I don't know how to experience <laughs> Vegas with children, but I would say a good way to do it is with an au pair. Yes, I'm, I'm guessing that they had substantive help, but I also saw I him- I didn't at, see them at excess. I saw him at Disney holding kids. He's carrying weights yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's an appropriate place for a child. Excess, they card. <laughs> I saw him with his kids a lot. I also saw him with uh, Patrick, uh, not Patrick Mahomes, uh, his brother- uh, Jackson, Jackson Mahomes. Jackson. He was yeah. uncomfortable with Jackson Mahomes, was kind of draped on him. And it felt like listening to the audio of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey on the field, it felt like that was a bit invasive. I mean, a bit. It was very invasive, but also it's the Super Bowl. There are microphones everywhere, and they were covering their mouth, and it's like, I love you so much. And there's either... I Either Taylor said in response, I'm so proud of you right now, or depending on the Twitter account that you follow, it's kind of like that is the dress blue or gold type of thing. Wow. I'm so turned on right now. I've heard both. Hmm. I don't think she said I'm so turned on right now. Why <laughs> else would she be covering her mouth? It's weird. Prove it, though? Is that it's what not you're what you know, or? Dano. It's what you can prove in a okay, court of law. And I don't know if that audio holds up. I truly what? don't. I, I don't that care what Sydney they bit. find to be evasive. I really don't. You're a power couple. You're the most famous yeah. person in the world. Like enough. The cameras are going to be on you. Let's yeah. give this don't a couple care. months before right. we find out this whole Jesus. time they've been recording everything and there's a new show or a movie. Well, or in a something. couple months, her new album's coming out, Billy. So wow. the reveal has already been revealed. I'll tell you how you you're evasive. You do what Leo DiCaprio yeah. did, which Date is twenty five year olds. <laughs> which is you don't pick your head up. Yeah, maybe. You know, scratch your nose a couple of times in a suspicious manner, and you just move on with your day. Mm -hmm. You don't go in front of all the cameras. Jeff Goldblum seems like a lot, right? Yeah, I know you guys Always. probably love him. He seems like a lot. I, I can't. What do you I mean? Could, he just seems like a lot. Never stops talking. He reminds oh, me of my you. God, the dan No way. Yes. You saw him dancing on the screen. You see me doing that? A little bit. There's endless amounts of energy there. It's incredible for his age how he has so much energy. Billy, are you, sir. Billy, are you getting out there first with the take of I'm done with Jason Kelsey? Enough with the Kelsey. And Jeff Goldblum. Enough what the with hell? and Jeff Goldblum. Enough with everybody. I didn't say those things. I just said uh, I just said Gold, those things. Goldblum seems like a lot. Does he not? Could you imagine if that was like your dad? Like you'd have to go places. I with love him. Goldblum. I not if he was sick. your dad. No, no, no. Not if he was your spend dad. Some real time. With exactly him. right. Yeah. It's yeah. fine to like him from a distance. You spend time. With I never him. have. I feel yeah. like he's super charming. He yeah. would be a delight, no, no, a no, funny no, no, delight no, 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 to no, no, be around. Turn it right. off. Charming. He's exactly a daddy. Right. Stop yeah. being Jeff. Goldblum. That would be weird exactly if he was your dad because he is so hot.
Kind of uh, like what Tony was saying earlier about his grandma. <laughs> hmm. Not what I was saying. If you're, hot? if you're trying That's to keep it down. That's why he thinks about her when she's... Uh, Tony, I don't know. I don't know what that, happened that there, Dano. Well, he was holding it down. Uh-huh. What? It was Mike's grandma, not mine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's messed up. That's a fine. <laughs> that's pretty messed up. I'll pay a fine for that. Ten dollars. Tony, Never why mind. why did you flog us with an attorney earlier? You were you were <laughs> <laughs> Let me. Well, st- Dan, obviously, I'm still John Reed's attorney from the stuff that happened. That we're oh, obviously, everybody so knows that. Obviously, came back, and I was like, "It's not what you know; it's what you can prove." I just have to say that so people know. Yeah, but you're you're a career loser at these cases. I don't understand get why. Loser. What? I, all right, look. Since you can't, it's not what you can prove; it's what you can prove in a, in, you know, a what you can prove. in a court of law. Let's all listen to this sound on the field, and you guys tell me what is being said here in their most intimate moment. I th- said this was invasive, not evasive. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for oh, coming, I baby. I can't believe that. Thank you. I can't believe you. Thank can't you for the support. You Thank you for that? coming. <laughs> Thank you for making it across the way across the world. You're the best, baby. Oh my god. The absolute best. Was it electric? It was unbelievable. Hmm. I don't see any. I'm proud of you. I didn't hear I'm either. So was a turned one. on. Didn't hear that was a different one in the Slack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was super clear, though. What were you that able one? to prove there, Dano? No, that was... nothing. <laughs> not a <laughs> damn thing. <laughs> it's not my. I was able to prove the video department pulled up the wrong video. I was able to prove what I was able to prove. <laughs> you wheel that up in court? No, I'm yeah, laughing yeah, at you yeah, from the yeah, other yeah, side. Yes, of course. Everybody is. That's this right. Is con- if he's John Reed's attorney and also trying yeah. to prove that and this is a conflict of interest, I don't like any of this, Tony. Whoa. Um, okay, so let's try this again with video and see if they can pull up the correct audio because that felt like that's the video we have the jury's laughing right oh, now, come on <laughs> come on what Seems do you mean like that's, that's the video tossed, we have tossed out of court. i have a video of john reed he made a music video if you want that video <laughs> oh, valentine's okay. day you what? do oh you do? I, I do what happens you have that now oh it's here if you want all it. right well go wait uh, you didn't give me the video i wanted so why don't you give me the one i don't <laughs> Is it Tony? Who do you love more? Jessica? Or who do you love more? Is it Lucy? A Roy? A Greg? Juju? A Chris? I'm done. One plus one. That's two ways to find love. One plus one. No, don't turn it down. No, you still sin- ten minutes. No, no you sink. No, you sink into this. Oh. This is what it's going to be like well, this with no. This is, I asked for a certain video, and this is what the new executive producer in that seat today gave me. This, so you sit in it. But they told me we had. Do not come out of it early. I was just told. Lewis just said in my ear, throwing everyone under the bus. This is what he was doing, recording this instead of getting you the Kelsey audio you wanted from Taylor Swift, because he was. Ba- oh, it's over. Dan as his lead counsel. It's good video. Happy what Valentine's I want to say Day. is he did not approach me with this. I wouldn't have brought it to the show. I would have had it stricken from the memory. How does that for get the on the air if not for Billy just panicking and throwing it on the air? How did how it, how did that go through the barricades and the censors and the things that protect us from bad content? Bad? Huh. Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's a catchy tune. One plus one. Plus. That was the G-rated version too. There was oh a, yeah, there was another version. I did hear the other version. Really? The other version is the one that I heard in Vegas. <laughs> Spicy. 
<laughs> the other one. There's a there's a blue version. Oh, yeah, there's like oh, an yeah, X-rated Dano. version of that and song. There's an X-rated <laughs> version. Yeah. It's not one plus one. No. Oh. Six plus nine, maybe. Hey. <laughs> This is really bad judgment. <laughs> Be warned. The ones who pick up a refreshingly cold drink from McDonald's and people see just how refreshingly cold that drink from McDonald's is, you may create drink envy. Because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. For a morning brew that really creates a stir, get any size iced coffee, including caramel and French vanilla, for just 99 cents before 11 a.m. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.